what's great is that for our demonstration, Panda allowed for us uh, to throw at their ad adaptive 360 solution many different variants of malware. John and I also spent the time uh, to showcase even furthermore that zero trust application service. We will show later to you a script that we wrote to just generate um, PEs on the fly and to check the att attestation service uh, provided by Adaptive 360. As well as I was getting our, our endpoints stood up, it was interesting. Some of the, uh, some of the um, executables and zips that I had left on the system for today's demo uh, were, were removed over, over uh, from the time I put them on there to the time today. So we know it is proactively uh, remediating potential issues on the endpoint in the form of those executables. So first, what we'd like to do is show you what an, it would look like um, if an endpoint did not have Adaptive 360 on it, and then show you what it looks like with Adaptive 360. And so we're going to detonate two different um, um, variants of malware within a sandbox. The reason we do this is because the sandbox permits for us to show you in, in time a breakdown of the different executions. So this, show, this can show the command and control traffic. This can show the additional executables that are being pulled down from remote web servers. It gives more forensic detail that we might not otherwise have um, if we deployed it onto your standard endpoint. Why? Because there are some additional things related to process trees that we'd have to look into. So the two detonations today are going to be and uh, related to mainstream malware are going to be the NJ rat. Um, I know when we did our initial poll, um, there was uh, a lot of you are in sales roles. So NJ rat is a remote access Trojan. And what that means is once the remote access Trojan is deployed to an endpoint, an untrusted or unauthorized user outside of your environment can now establish access to the command line on the infected machine. This allows for you to kill processes, um, remotely execute or manipulate files. You can also manipulate the system registry. In the case of NJ Rat, it was first seen in 2013, but it was most recently seen as today. Um, so this is still in the wild. It is still compromising endpoints, and it originates from the Middle East. Um, I will highlight the, the, the task that we have run in our sandbox later, but let me continue in our overview of Emotet. Emotet is in part of another malware family and is, well, a Trojan. However, Emotet has been used uh, similarly to a malware as a service type campaign. This means that because Emotet is very complex in its advanced persistent measures and in its ability for evasion techniques, it can reside on an endpoint, establish a foothold, and then introduce additional malware into an environment. There's been reported uh, instances of where the Emotet operators have worked with GAN crab operators. GAN crab is another part malware, specifically ransomware. So Emotet first gained access to the system through banking Trojan and information stealer, stealer usually delivered through mail spam, and then it introduced other destructive uh, malware or ransomware into the environment. Again, first seen in 2014, but recently seen as, as such today, the 21st of October. So it's currently being used in the wild. So without further ado, I'm gonna exit from my deck here, but what we've done is we've created some, um, some backup slides in the event uh, things don't work out. But I'm switching over here to, to a web browser and I hope everyone is able to see that on their end. If I can just get a thumbs up or a yes um, from somebody you're else. Good. We're good, awesome. Yeah. We'll, we'll dive into the console of a, a Adaptive uh, Defense 360 and, and how uh, our endpoints are using it. 
But first, let's talk about um, what's going on in our sandbox. So in this sandbox, you have the detonation of NJ rat. You can see here it is an executable. And then down below, we have our process, our process tree of, of, of what's going on and happening. Once the executable is launched on an endpoint, you really, from these screenshots, can't see anything furthermore happening, right? It, it, you just receive this one notice, and then it's been executed. However, on the background, and this is really where we like to focus, you see that it is using Windows utilities to execute additional tasks. Um, this is a measure in offensive security known as living off the land. And this allows for adversaries to try and introduce as, as little as necessary of new into the environment by using utilities that are already there on the endpoint. However, you can see that down the road, additional um, binaries are pulled down through an IP address that's located in Russia. These other binaries are where the crux of NJ rat resides in execution. So it's not the additional um, executable or PE that introduces the malware into your environment. It's in fact, the additional um, binaries that it downloads. So I'll pause here for a moment and I wanna pivot over um, to our endpoint that is branding Panda because I think now would be a good time uh, for you to see how Adaptive uh, Defense 360 responds um, with Panda deployed. Excuse me, I'm probably fat fingering several things here. There we go. There you go. So, what we had done uh, to set up this demonstration and to streamline it a bit is we had put everything here in our downloads folder, not only as executables, but also as a zip. And over time, we can see that programs have been blocked and files had been quarantined. So those were probably removed from our endpoint, but nothing to worry about. What we've done is we've simulated an attacking machine here. This attacking machine has our executables on it for agent uh, Tesla, Emotet, mass logger, uh, and an unknown executable. If we were to pivot over to our endpoint now and just download one of the executables related to uh, NJ rat and save it, we can see that it's been downloaded to the endpoint. However, when we try and execute this executable and run it, we see that Panda Adaptive Defense 360 is running below. We know through the um, status wheel that there's our, our attempts to be being executed. And right there you see an untrusted program has been blocked. So NJ rat as itself has not been able to run or execute on our system. So compared to before when we're not using adaptive defense 360, we would have had an executable that could have potentially run on our endpoint because we didn't have um, the zero trust application service available to us to say, this is not a trusted program. P pivoting so, back over for a moment. Sorry, I got a couple windows here. Let's look at Emotet. So Emotet. Just to, yeah, go just ahead, to, John. Sorry, just to interject real quick. So just just, just to be extra clear. So in, in the NJ rat, uh, any run where, where we saw all those additional processes running, what Panda effectively did was killed it at the very top. So that initial executable never ran. So all the cascading things below it never happened. So it, it kills it at the top of the chain. Yeah, great so, call out. And that is a good highlight. So you see if I minimize the, the process tree here in the chain, effectively none of what happens below occurs to John's point because it is stopped here at the initial PE yeah. that was dropped on the endpoint. Great yeah, call so out. So all Thank that advanced, for yeah. No yeah, worries. Yeah, I was gonna say all that advanced forensics, 
all that advanced forensics and deep dive that an analyst would typically have to do to see like how mm -hmm. how deep the malware had gotten a foothold on the system never happens. It's killed and everybody can just move on like nothing happened because nothing did happen. Right. And fortunately, and we'll show you later, and I'll probably turn it over to Rui to do more of a dashboard deep dive, but you can see those incidents as they pop up in the Adaptive Defense 360 form. So moving along around Emotet, right? Um, let's see what it looks like uh, if we did not have Panda Adaptive Defense 360 installed, right? You have several different types of communication in the terms of connection to IP addresses. There as well are some HTTP requests. But furthermore, we see that there are specific threats that are identified. In this case, we have the emo, Emotet XE, which we were able to capture uh, the other day. And when we detonated it in the sandbox, you see similar to NJ Rat, it's not necessarily the initial PE that becomes malicious, but this is what you call a multi-stage payload in which attacks are chained together. So you have an initial PE that's dropped on a system that executes some tasks, which then attempt to pull down another executable. So again, from, from the view of execution here, if our video will play, you see that the executable is run, some processes are done and then you're infected. Let's again, try and play that as it happens so quickly. In our case, again, if we pivot back over to our test environment, we'll move out of that. We can download our same Emotet executable from our attack box. We can see that it's been successfully downloaded. And we can try and launch that same malware on the endpoint. Now, you might be saying to yourself, this is, this is great and all, but Emotet and NJRAT are known. There's probably signatures and it's, it's, it's Panda Adaptive Defense 360 is aware that these things are malicious. And to your point, um, what you're thinking to yourself is accurate. However, even furthermore, there are other variants of malware that we've not yet to execute on this system. So the attestation service of those executables hasn't occurred. So let's go ahead and download Agent Tesla onto our box, as well, Mass Logger. Now these, these um, executables have not been run on this endpoint yet, so I'm not sure how Panda would respond right now, but because of what has happened in the past in our testing, I presume that the same thing is going to happen. And I'll try and execute um, these PEs and Panda is going to block it because it's an untrusted program. That was Agent Tesla. If I try it again with Mass Logger, we'll see as well, Panda Adaptive Defense 360 blocks it. These alerts again are being generated in the dashboard to show that the malware execution tried to happen. And we'll dive into the dashboard here in a moment. But again, you might be saying to yourself, those are malware variants. They're going to have to be known by a backend system somewhere to which I say, again, a valid point. But what if I told you I could generate an executable on the fly randomly and again, see whether or not the attestation service is going to block it. We can pivot over here to our attack box and you'll see we've just coded a couple lines in Python to generate a random executable and all it simply does is print a statement that is a random string. It then compiles that code uh, from the random string to the executable name. So we've we've done we've done one already. That's this random string right here, the, starting with a QBS. But just for brevity's sake, I'll go ahead and generate another one we'll see that a new one has been generated and I'm going to use this one 
since I've done it here before all of you, um, to pull down onto our box. So let's go ahead and refresh. We can see that there's the C code and here's our compiled executable. I'll go ahead and save that to my endpoint. If we view downloads here, we can confirm that it's been downloaded. And I can see it is in my downloads. And I'll go ahead and try and run. Again, the spinning wheel in the background means that something is happening. And as you can see, through the pop-up from Panda Adaptive Defense 360, an executable that I just randomly generated on the fly before you is an untrusted program because of the zero trust that Panda has applied into their end security controls through Adaptive Defense 360.